looks like first we got going up. We got Silhouette going first. Let's get it. Entrepreneur, y'all ready? Whoop, 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 MCs, whoop. y'all ready? Yeah. Then for everybody in attendance. Oh, let's get ready to rumble. Hey, John. Hey, man. The flyer for this battle should have said, SK the novelist gets murdered. Along with a couple of nobodies nobody's ever heard of. See, I don't think this battle and shit is right for you. After the night, you might as well put the pen down and pay me to write for you. You need to stay in your lane. And if you want to make a pass, make sure that you have a right of way before you end up in a permanent hideaway seeking a light of day. I don't think you understand. You look like a motherfucker that would work at Journeys. And this is the journey. This is the weekend at Bernie's. He's Bernie. What that means is he belongs on the gurney. That last battle was Sesame Street. Me and Live came to murder Bert and Ernie. Yeah, they saw that shit. SK the novelist versus Filthy the philosopher. The shit was unbearable. The only reason you won that battle was because Filthy was fucking terrible. You went 30 seconds with no crowd reaction. Had to start snapping to get them laughing. I mean, you actually said that you thought that battle was going to be like the takeover versus Ether. But it was more like Siskel and Ebert. Getting makeovers and matching t-shirts, trying to rap and having seizures. You think he's even ever heard of the takeover Ether? Me neither. I watched that battle, I smoked like three blunts thinking this is all you motherfuckers could come up with in three months. Nobody cared that you beat Filthy. So you choosing this battle means you understand you get more buzz off of you losing this battle. But you keep battling people like him and you'll always win. But you fucked up with me, I'll leave your body where the crawl space ends. See, the hunter's code is the same as it's always been. This is a cipher sacrifice as you all face in. Let's get it in. It's on USK. Let's go. <laughs> Silhouette. What up? Don't you ever think you're big and bad after you go. If they call you the winner tonight, my mom is going to kick your ass after this show. <laughs> She's drinking too, so you better believe it. All right. My entendres is something like untouchable. See, they see my rap group and say, boy, those guys are really busting the flow. Guys are busting the flow. Yeah. This is the type of thing that up and happens when you come to Asheville and want to battle the young hip rapper with a couple of classics tucked up under his mattress. So you try to be clever lyrical and smash seven syllables, but your substance lacking so you look like a fucking has-been. <laughs> my best friend. Newsflash. I slaughtered you tonight. And tell Mike Live he can get it next if Filthy don't do it right. <laughs> they tell me the art of war don't start a war, but I'm a carnivore. 94 hours a week I sharpen swords. This guy got a rapper costume from the party store. So you being a stand-up guy to me is comedy. Hardy har. Who they said you wanted with? Not me, God. I got the scoop from your crew. They told me you're softening and hogging dies. Your entourage said you turn out like the pale skin Papa Doc. They been sleeping on the kid. Go ahead and cop your cop. It's going to be a long three rounds, sonny. Go ahead and pop your squat. Now, picture me defeating Derek Bowden while me and Tucson sipping to Arizona. Picture me bodying you and your number one fan making you both share a coma. See, I clothesline rappers from here to Sonoma, putting MCs on coals, taking in the sheer aroma. Sonoma, clothing line, coals, yeah. The rounds of Corona must have you gassed up. Coronary flow and art, heart for heart, we don't match up. Corona is described as the gaseous fear around the sun. Rounds of Corona, gassed up, this type of entendres put your ass in square one. That's my round one. All right, go ahead. Hey, hey, hey make some noise for round one, round one. Woo. 
First off, if you win this battle, you'll be lucky. It's a good thing your mama is drinking, because after I beat you, she's going to fuck me. Now listen close. You're not even on my list to scratch off. He's telling you you're straight. But you're not even on my list to scratch off. But you took this battle thinking you hit the lottery. But you must be confused like you're standing out the side of the bathroom, not sure which one to use, but you got to pee. I see you, mid-trans, and transgender, somewhere between Bruce and Caitlyn Jenner, sniffing glue and contemplating paint thinners. I know that wasn't politically correct. I heard you track seven minutes in a crown and I legitimately object. Should have named this battle Seven Minutes in a Crown. That's a dope name, homeboy, but watch me spin this shit around. We could have called your sex life Seven Minutes in a Frown. But we're gonna stick with Seven Minutes in a Crown. He sucks dick for seven minutes and swallows and eat a whiskey to wash it down. That's your family laughing. If you're SK the novelist, then I'd be Stephen King after Seven Minutes in a Crown. That's a dope name, the novelist. And then watch me flip this shit around. SK and Filthy, that's like the Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. This is Ann Rice doing an interview with the vampire. You about to be gone with the wind. You wanted war and peace, but the results may vary. But this is Stephen King Barry and Dr. Seuss in his pet cemetery. Yeah, now you follow that shit. It's Mortal Kombat, right? Between Pocahontas and Nostradamus, my visions come true. I studied the art of war, yin and yang, Shang Sun and Sun Tzu. I'm Orwell on the beat, instrumental on repeat with a mechanical arm. I was born a year before 1984. You look like you were raised on an animal farm. You feel me? Yeah. So you understand the next time you see me, you better act like you know me. This is more like Don Quixote trying to conquer Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that's how you flip shit. I'm done. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> SK, that's on you. You rap real tough, acting like you can't bleed. You talk for two minutes about how I write books, then brag that you can read. Will SK be victorious over silhouette? Ask yourself if a seal is wet. See, I could woo the crowd with some horrific bullshit that'll never happen, but I believe in wordplay entendres. To me, that's clever rapping. This guy is the cinnamon Eminem. Went to the cinema, saw his movie, spent his whole life trying to mimic him. If y'all think that's an original style, you're bugging. It's the only white rapper to get compared to Eminem and then love it. I can see you bumping his first four albums while standing in the nearest mirror, perfecting every part of his songs down to the last era, era. You even try to order damn hair bleach on eBay with PayPal, but it never got to your damn house because you put your address was eight miles. It's like a chicken in the egg theory. Did you suck his dick because you completely stole his entire style? Or did he give you some style because you completely sucked his entire dick? Did you look originality right in the eyes and say, fuck that shit? Follow this. White trash. Ten to one, your favorite band is Hoobastank. Ten to one, you get aired out worse than a scuba tank. You are ass, I bet you get a lot of booty spanks. <laughs> your first big loss, who you got your crew to thank? <laughs> For you taking this battle was the mother cow, a huge mistake, see? <laughs> I hate you. He hates you, we all hate you. I done asked around, don't no one like you. But, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to give you a fair shot, I heard you was nice. Wanted to do my research, see how you sound. Google, Silhouette, North Carolina rapper. 
Zero results found. You don't even have a project for us to peep. I'm a DJ. I'm literally a radio head. And you are just a creep. <laughs> We're supposed to be MCs. I know it's a hard life to manage. But dog, if I had a dollar for every song you've ever put out, I couldn't even buy a sandwich. We're starving out here waiting for you to drop a single. If your career was potato chips, you don't even got a Pringle. And if one freestyle verse could provide your fans with lunch, they'd still starve. You haven't been to the cipher in months. So any boast you claim is complete, null, and void. I say I'll retire you. It's not proof you were ever employed. You criticize with nobody at work, just like J Electronica. That's why your talk is cheaper than a Jewish boy in a dollar store yarmulke. Let's go. That's my round, man. Make some noise. Make some noise. Come on. Ooh. That's why there's three rounds. That's why there's three rounds. Last round here. My man Silhouette is on you. That was really good. <laughs> What'd you say? Don't be nice. Be nice. I have no social media presence, but I have respect and notoriety. You have Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, and no variety. I'm on tracks and albums you can purchase on iTunes and purchase in the mall. You're a student of what I do, waiting on textbooks to purchase in the fall. This is verbal origami, I'm brainstorming tsunamis. But you want to treat hip hop like a basic art. Meanwhile, every dart is razor sharp and I make sure to rip your face apart. But you had the nerve to ask my family for advice. Ghost Dog didn't even realize that you were SK the novelist. I'm at the top of the totem pole, your birds sit on top of an obelisk. Ghost Dog looked at you like you were dead already. Like a ghost dog. Shaking his head, looking down at his feet. Tucson's best advice for you was to stay the fuck in the car and to keep moving down the street. Yeah, you laugh. See, people you look up to respect me. And I don't have anybody on Facebook trying to check me. See, Charlie posted that you would get murdered. That's one of my best friends. But you get all in your feelings and you go and you text him like, how can you say that? Not understanding that me and him go way back to the point if you put your hands on me, that motherfucker's coming for payback. Now listen real close. You called me telling me you want 30 extra seconds in a second. But then live told you, you set a guideline and you need to respect it. So you called me back, complaining about him. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, where in the fuck would you be without him? But then again, live put you up to this, knowing you get destroyed. So don't be mad at me for this tragedy. You might want to look at your boy. I've been waiting all night long, wondering how long it'll take you to realize that's not your homeboy. Live must fucking hate you. Real talk, bitch. You wanted 30 extra seconds. I'll stop now and give you 90. Let this motherfucker rap all night. When he's done, come and find me. I'll be at the bar acting hateful, trying to get Joey and Chandler and the rest of your friends to hook me up with Rachel. Yeah, that's his girlfriend's name. I'm just saying I think she's sexy. She already got my number, so do me a favor and don't forget to tell her to text me. You thought this battle was bad. I'll be fucking up your whole night when I tell her to hold tight so I can slip it in the hole, right? She wanted to play show and tell. Meaning she wanted to skip the show and tell you she don't feel so well and then secretly meet me up at the hotel. That's how it goes around here. I don't, I, don't have, I don't give a fuck about what y'all think about me. You say these people don't like me. I have no interest in making friends. I don't make amends. Your self-esteem is paper thin. I shred it in front of your team to watch them take it in. I'll snap your back in half with an uppercut that'll break your chin and throw you off the stage and make sure that your vertebrae can break again. And I'm not being an asshole when I say I'm not shit. I can see it on your homeboy's face when I spit. I'm hungry like I missed the plate. Every rhyme will penetrate because every time I spit a bar, it makes the same sound that a pistol makes. So hold still for the missile's sake. We'll see how long this will take. I'm that feeling you get when you're lost in the woods at night walking alongside Crystal Lake. I'm Freddy's fingers on your teddy bear. I'm the reason you can't sleep because when you dream at night, you already know that Freddy's there. 
Yeah, I might be Candyman. Real life Slender Man. Looking for trick or treaters. Dressed as rappers in Candyland. But look out for Sasquatch in the mountains in beast mode. I'll see hawks from a battleship and sink your fleet with no cheat codes. You understand? I'm, I'm on the same shit that Spock is on. I'm like Genghis Khan fighting a soccer mom, blindfolded, walking around the octagon. I'm more creative than you can ever hope to be. Your shit is less adult to me, like when you're trying to smoke a blunt at the crib and all you got is potpourri. I know you fucking heard me. I smoke bluegrass on the track and leave you face down in the mud like the Kentucky Derby. This shit is over, bitch. Make some noise for hip hop. Make some noise for Silhouette. Last round, song USK. Shit. Rapping some big words by the octagon. We in Asheville. I am a phenomenon. These people are here simply because John is on. Neither my mom or my girl are gonna fuck you because your dick is so small you can't even put a condom on. <laughs> Flip city. Shit. Your people talk about you like Jesus is coming back. I thought they hated me. <laughs> Rapping in my verse. Your people talk about you like Jesus is coming back. And as a religious man, I'm excited as hell. Like, shit, Jesus is going to rap. And your disciples, they swore to God I get washed like a dinner set. But truth be told, I've heard more bars from you tonight than I could even find on the internet. So, I'm supposed to assume some predetermined dominance in your diction? But until you prove that preposterous hypothesis in fairy tales is just fiction, you ought to see the knowledge I'm dropping. I dumbfound your sweetheart. I get stupid love. You're going to come to my home and defeat me? You must be more stoned than Medusa's plug. You like that? How you gonna rap about seven minutes of crown? Go on my SoundCloud, know where your shit is to be found. Ask Mike, he'll tell you. Organizing this event was a hell of a task. We had to figure through more shit than an elephant ass. Where was you? You wanna battle? Why don't you leave the venue? I got your money in my pocket right now. Come get the Jinsu. I Jinsu jack you. Your menu lacked. <laughs> Why the whole venue packed? Shit. We come out right now. Third round, you get slaughtered. I slaughtered your firstborn, second, third daughter. Anybody in your family, come get the insanity. Shit, I could come off the top of written. Come, come, come get it, family. All right. That's my third round. We got it. Go ahead. Hey, make some noise for these two competitors. Ah, more no uh, 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 uh. Once again, that was Silhouette on your right. That was SK, the novelist, on your left. Yes. Love, wow. Love, love. So uh, what we got, the first battle, the Silhouette versus SK, the novelist. Y'all give it up for both battles. Yeah. Oh, that's just it. Man, foul, scored it at uh, two and a half out of five rounds. My man, Strange, said uh, it was a three and oh, clear. Cesar said it was a 2.5 out of five. Are y'all ready to hear your winner, y'all? Yeah! The winner of tonight's battle is Silhouette. Give it up. Yeah! Absolutely. Silhouette, any comments, bro? Hey, make some noise for hip hop. Yeah. One more time, make noise, because y'all ain't making noise. Yeah. Alright, man, I just want to appreciate everybody coming out tonight. SK Live bringing me out here. I appreciate it. Asheville, much love. Thank you. Silhouette versus SK. Um, I felt that Silhouette uh, stayed more on SK. Like, it was more consistent, you know? Um, but it was, but SK started coming back, so I scored it uh, 2.5 silhouette and uh, 0.5 to SK because it wasn't quite, me giving him a zero would not do SK justice because he really did start fighting back. It's just 
silhouette the whole time was on and then SK was actually on like a part of like the second I believe uh, round so I had to give him something you know so but I mean they both he, he really started coming back though he got he just he got warmed up too late and that's what hurt him you know okay. yeah go um yeah silhouette versus SK uh Cesar kind of hit the nail on the head with a lot of that shit, and it's really, it runs down the line, and it's really a matter of focus, um, and it pertains to this one in particular, but all of them really, which is that um, SK had an intent and a focus and a purpose. Um, it's something that even in songwriting, um, when I used to make albums, we used to, uh, Cats I used to write with together, there was a way of writing a song that we used to call High Concept, <clears throat> which is that without getting too far deep in it, it's like where you come up with the idea for the song and you do not let one bar pass that's not either a setup or a punchline for that exact thought. You do that thought 48 fucking times in 48 different ways, but it never leaves that subject. You know what I mean? And that is what Silhouette did in that. Like, he approached the battle in a high concept way. Also, he looks like an angry Abraham Lincoln, and that shit was really terrifying, you know what I mean? Like, he's like a vampire hunter, I don't know, but I definitely, you know, was like, yo, he might actually Something bad might happen, I don't know. Like, he might run over somebody after he leaves the club, I don't know, but... I'm not accusing him of anything, I'm just saying he won the battle, he was, he was focused, you know, and that's, it was... Um, also, though, I had to score it 3 nothing silhouette, but that's not exactly exemplary of how I feel. Like, you know, it's like in football games you watch and you're like, the score didn't necessarily tell the tale of the game, you know what I mean? Um, he kind of ran up the scoreboard on him, but, uh, SK's second verse was actually fucking awesome, and had, like, put it like this, if he had said that verse third, then that was, that was better than Silhouette's first verse or his third verse, he just had the misfortune of saying that the same round that Silhouette said his best verse, mm -hmm. um, so I do, I scored a 3-0, but I actually agree with Cesar that, like, if you can do that, which I'm not sure you can, motherfucker, you might be <laughs> cheating. Um, if you can give a 2.5 to a half a round to a motherfucker, then, yeah, I'll go with Cesar's unique Terrence Howard-like scoring methods of mathematics. You know what I mean? I'll go, I'm, I'm with it, you know? I'm a wild outlaw anyway, so I don't give a shit about math. Um... But yeah, that's how I feel about that battle. Yeah, round one, SK and Silhouette. Silhouette was precise. There was punchline, insult, punchline. I'm gonna talk about this guy I'm battling. I'm gonna shit on him. And no pausing, no breakdowns. He um they told a story about like a last battle that I didn't even see. And a lot of times you get like I say inside references in battles and they suck, but he actually explained what the fuck he was talking about. It wasn't just like a, you suck, now here's how cool I am. It was like, I wrote a fucking verse, you know? <laughs> and all three of his rhymes were that thing where S SK was good, but he definitely chopped up a couple times and he kept pausing and stopping and thinking about what he was saying. And I really think dude threw him with the, I'm gonna fuck your mom line round two. When you start your second round with, I'm gonna fuck your mom, who's standing right there with a camera in her hand, now my mom has footage on her phone of somebody saying he's gonna fuck her. Cause, cause of me. Yeah. Cause I brought her here. So you can see why he got thrown. Yeah. It was, you know, SK definitely had a lot more rhymes than I was expecting when I saw him. You know, like he definitely came came well, but it wasn't it wasn't enough. Silhouette ripped it. <laughs>